for the LSAT on and off for almost, I would say, a year now, but it's it hasn't been consistent. It's I've been taking some breaks, but um, so far I've taken the LSAT twice, and I just feel like I haven't, um, like every time I sit down for the LSAT, I just feel like I'm not prepared enough to get the score that I want. And um, I've been scoring really low, but I've also been struggling a lot with the material because I went through so many material, like the LSAT trainer, the, the loophole book, power score, Kaplan. And um, I guess like I've been trying to memorize a lot of like the techniques. And I just realized that a lot of these, um, I guess companies and like individuals, like they've, um, they've come up with a, with a technique or a strategy that works for them, but I feel like it just doesn't work for me. And um, I, I, and this is why I guess like I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out because I feel like I, I need some tutoring. I need something that's going to help me be consistent with, with studying and also just get the score I want. Like I'm not aiming for a perfect like 180 or, or, or like in, in the 70s, like I'm, I'll be happy with the 160 or even in the high, high um, 160s. I hear you. Well, thanks for sharing the background. It's good to get a sense of what you've done, what you've been through. And it sounds like you need something personalized something that is not a one size fits all, something that it does not only work for certain people, but rather a prep process that is specific to you and how you think about the exam. Yes. Sure. And it's, um, that's, I think that's what so many people need and they pick and choose different elements from what other offerings contain, but it's hard to put them all together. Yeah. And I, I realized when I sit down for the LSAT and um, I come across a question and I'm like, oh, this is how the loophole did it. So let me do that. And then I end up doing it. And then I get the, I get the question wrong. And I'm like, all right. So I, I, I did what they, what they asked us to like, you know, what they suggested that we do. And I, I just don't understand what I'm, what I'm doing wrong or like Mm -hmm. why I don't see an improvement in my, in my score. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. One thing could be, that strategies take a while before you see the results. Sometimes you adopt a new strategy and you go down as you're trying to figure out how to adopt it before you go up. That's one possibility. Another possibility is that it's not the right technique for you. That's another possibility. Or it could just be that you're doing so many different strategies at the same time or one after the other that you've got bits and pieces of different things going on simultaneously and you're trying to hold all of it in your head. Yeah, that, that's the basic, that's basically it. And then um, I ended up like putting together like this, uh, I have this binder full of like how to like attack each strategy. And I um, pretty much broke it down to how like each, um, I guess you can say like Kaplan or the way the LSAT trainer said to do it. And then I just sat down to kind of memorize it. And I just realized that I just wasted like months of my time. And now I'm at a point where I'm like, I don't want to take another year off. Like I, I, I want to get the score I want and I want to like apply to law school already. Like I, I don't want to waste any more time. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. I mean, the thing is that when you keep, you said memorization a few times, like memorizing, memorizing that the LSAT's not a test of memorization. I get the impulse to do that because it works in so many other contexts. And as part of how these books are designed with definitions and glossaries and such, it almost suggests that you should try to memorize, but this exam is a test of skills, not information, you know? Yeah. I, and, and that's why I, I don't want to get to that point where I'm memorizing anymore. I want to get to a point where I see a question and I know what to do. Like, um, like, you know, with the flaw questions, like I find it really absurd how like people are able to, or like, you know, they suggest people memorize those like 21 common, like flaw, like, um, uh, I, what do you call this? Like the flaw questions, right? Yeah, so the I'm classic just, like, fallacies. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, how are people able, are able to do that? And I did index cards and all that. And I still haven't grasped, grasped anything. Yeah. So this exam is an exam of skills based and comprehension, but you can't get it through flashcards alone. I mean, maybe there are a couple of isolated cases where flashcards could be useful, like for indicator words, but that's really it. What I'm about is giving you a step-by-step process for each section each question type, a process, and you follow that process. And you can adjust and adapt it. I give you a framework. I give you guidelines. 
It's a process for approaching questions. It's also a process for how you review questions after the fact, the Socratic review method. So how you analyze any question that gives you difficulty, anything you guessed on, anything that you weren't 100% confident in. Those are all worth reviewing. And I give you a process to follow for reviewing the questions you get wrong. But that's very different than a process for applying formal logic to something. I, I purchased the um, Supreme package and I haven't had, um, like I did a couple of days ago, I haven't had the chance to um, start my lessons yet, but I'm, I'm going to, today's going to actually be my first day right after work. I'm planning on sitting down and going through the introduction. Um, I found it really helpful going through the, through the um, individual process of like students who are already enrolled in your, in your course. I was able to relate to a lot of them because um, I'm not, I'm not just studying for the LSAT. Like I work during the day and then afterwards I have to find that energy to get at least two hours in. So it was really helpful for me to hear the stories of like students who are already in this course and they were giving tips on like how to get that energy to even put in two hours after work or how do they manage or, or the time management. So that that was really um, helpful for me. And I think, and, and I felt like, you know, I, I finally found a, a, a course that fits me because like I'm, I, I get, I get uh, motivated by like the energy that's around me. So when I see that people are in the same like situation or position as I am in, then it, it kind of motivates me to kind of like get things done. I love that. I'm so glad to hear. That's why I built the course the way I did. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to um, say that uh, I'm, I'm a little worried about like time-wise because I, I realized that it's, it's mid-August and the next time I'm going to be taking the LSAT is in October. And then I think I have one more shot in November. And um, I know you have the one month study and then the two month. But now I, after like, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest, like after seeing like the courses that I, or the videos I have to go through, I kind of felt overwhelmed because I'm like, now I have to start like the process all over again. And is that enough time for me to study and also like grasp like each concept and apply that on, on, on exam day? Like, I'm not sure if that's enough time. I hear what you're saying. No. And I, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. That's part of why I built the study plan foundational section of the course to give you that step-by-step -step breakdown of exactly what to do every single day over the course of your prep. There's obviously so much in my course as a whole that you could take a year and not work through all of it. That's fine. You don't have to. The idea is that use the foundational part for a while to help you build your foundation in each section, each question type. And then once you have an idea of what your weak areas are, you can then watch lessons specifically on those topics and also attend the classes specifically on those topics. But we have more live classes and more full length class recordings than you could possibly hope to work through in certainly two to three months and not even in six months or a year, but you don't have to go through all of it. I make it available so that you can go deeper in the areas that you feel you need to. Okay. I, and, and I'm sure like you've met students like me in, in the past. So, um, so as a beginner, like what kind of advice do you give, um, students on how to like, um, I guess, like navigate the whole, whole thing without feeling overwhelmed? Well, I'd suggest start with the foundational study plans. And I would say follow the, the two month or the three month, depending on whether you're going for October or November. And you can adjust midway through. It's fine. The level, the, the schedule is more important for the level of specificity about what to do in what order rather than the day-by-day -day breakdown. So you're working full-time. So many other students are as well. You can do more on the weekends if you need to and catch up there. You can do a little bit less during the week. It's totally fine. Carve out the time in your day where you can. So if it's primarily after work, that's fine. A couple hours on most weekdays is enough. And then you do a bit more on the weekend. Um, I, I'm, I'm just like, um, cause I'm also like thinking about burnout too, because I felt like it's happened to me in the past where after I took the LSAT last year, November, I remember I was, I was studying for months. And then right after that exam, like I, I just like crashed, like I couldn't like 
pick up the books again. And right after I got my score, I was just so discouraged. I'm like, started questioning whether I want to go to law school or, or not. And then like I, my current job and like, you know, my personal experiences and, and even my professional experiences, like I, I stopped questioning whether I want to go to law school because I, I realized that the place I'm in now, it, I'm, I'm there for a reason. And, you know, law school is a route that I really want to take. But then it took me until March. So from November, from no, the end of November all the way to March, it took me until then to pick up another LSAT book to continue studying. And I, and I don't want to get to that point where I burn out again. So I guess, like, how do I, like, what kind of advice would you give, like, to avoid that altogether? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you raised that. And thank you for sharing that with me. I think mindset's really important. So one resource I created for you is called the LSAT Mastery Dashboard. You'll find it in the foundational section of the course. And that helps you track what you're putting in. I find too often students are results-focused rather than input-focused. So I want you to track the number of hours you're spending, the number of videos you're watching, the number of problems you're completing, the number of classes you're attending. And you measure, okay, well, rather than your subjective feeling of where you're at, you look at what have I actually done? What you actually do will, of course, impact how you're feeling, but it also, by tracking it and documenting what you're putting in, you'll see, hey, I've done a lot, and maybe I've done too much this week, I'll, and I'm feeling burnt out and feeling tired. I'll lower the heat a little bit for next week. And it's not about the number of problems you're getting correct. I don't even want you to think about that. Accuracy is obviously important, but I want you to think more about what you're investing in the process because the results will come with time, but they're not immediate. Because this is not memorization, it's not like you memorize one topic, then you're always going to be good on that topic. It's skills-based and you build the skills over time. You try out different techniques over time and you see what works and what doesn't work. But it's not a gradual increase like 10 hours of studying equals five points or something like that. A flash of insight can change everything and you never know when it's going to come. But by following the Socratic review method, by following the foundational study plan, you will get there in the end. And you're also not shooting for a 180. So you don't need to study like you are. Obviously, I, I really, I, I've said this before, I think everyone should aim for 180, but don't feel like you have to get it. By aiming high, you'll end up higher than you would have been otherwise. Like I'm, I'm, I'll be ecstatic if I get like 180, but I just feel like um, my, my goal overall is to just, because I, I, there's a, a few schools that I, that I've, um, like I outlined, like where I want, where I want to go and what scores that they that, that what, what what is the score that they what is the median score that they want and it's it's ranging in like you know the high high 160s and of course like you know there's like ivy leagues and and all that but i but i i believe like you know with I, ivy leagues is like highly competitive they barely give out like scholarship money so for me my my goal isn't to like get into a i guess you can say an ivy league but I, for me it's like you know which school is going to give me the most money because i don't want to i don't want to pay for school like i don't want to be in debt and that's like the most important thing for me. And, and, and this is why, like, you know, I'm investing in a LSAT score. I mean, an LSAT um, tutoring course, because like, you know, it's an, it's an investment. And I just feel like this is not the area where I, I guess like I, this is the area where I feel like I really want to invest in because, you know, it's in, in the long run, it's going to help, it's going to uh, benefit me because I, I know so many people who gone through this else um to, through the law school route and they're in debt or they've dropped out and they never never finish and i don't want to end up like that of course not i don't want you to either and you know the importance of this getting a high score doesn't have to be 180 but getting a high score can get you a full ride to law school and yeah. i got the sense from your t-shirt close records that you want to go the public interest route and I, I resonate with that a lot i'm from new york too so i i know what you're talking about there and so, yeah, get, let's get you a high score. Let's get you a 160 plus. Let's get you a 170 plus. Let's get you a full ride so you can go that public interest path that I imagine you want to go. Yeah, I, I do. I've been, um, I've been working with uh, incarcerated, formerly incarcerated people since like I graduated, even, even before I graduated from, from undergrad. Um, I, I got my first internship. And then from there, like I, I realized like this is the route that I, I want to go because, you know, I, I also had brothers who were incarcerated. So, um, this is, you know, it, it has a personal touch, but at the same time, like, this is where I know that 
I know it's it's very cliche, like you know, you want to you want to leave the world better than you found it. And I feel like my contribution is is in that field. So this is why I'm 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 really hoping that I I, I really make it to where, where I want to be. Yeah. I hope you do too, and we'll do everything we can <laughs> to get you there. And you have real concrete motivations that you can keep in mind, and I can sense how those fuel you. And knowing that this is a, a long journey, we want you to remain fueled with your energy high, but not so high that you burn out early. So yeah. let's track your energy. Let's track your forward momentum progress. I'll send you a link to the LSAT mastery dashboard so you can keep track of what you're putting in. So you don't go too little. You don't go too much. I think too much is more likely. We'll moderate it accordingly and we'll guide you along the way. I think that's all um, I had to pretty much mention, but um, is there anything else I need to like be aware of for the course or anything like that? Not in particular. I just encourage you attend classes as you're able, ask questions, participate. You can type in the Zoom chat. You can unmute yourself and ask whatever questions you'd like. I really like to make the classes <coughs> as interactive as possible. And also feel free to submit requests. You can always email me about particular topics you want to cover, particular questions you want to cover, and we'll add them to the agenda for upcoming classes. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Steve. I really appreciate it. Of course, my pleasure. I'm glad we got to meet and feel free to reach out anytime. Happy to help. Thank you. Of course, have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.